All right, Ada, set it down right here. This is the spot. It seems a little dry here, Otto. Maybe you should plant closer to the community garden. Uh, no way. My tree can't be crowded by other plants. When I'm done with it, this tree is going to be the biggest, bestest, most awesomest tree ever! Bestest and awesomest aren't real words. Ada, do you want to talk about vocabulary? Or do you want to help me grow a world-famous tree? Sorry, Otto. I was going to go play pinata kickball with Clara. Fine. I can handle it on my own. I've got everything I need right here. Let's get to work, tree. All right. Grow! Come on! And Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Monty? The score is love 30. Monty, what are you doing? I'm just taking care of my little tree. We're playing go fish. Um, uh, Monty, playing cards isn't actually taking care of your tree. Don't worry. I'll give it some of my tuna casserole after dinner tonight. <laughs> You've got a lot to learn about gardening, Monty. Good luck with your tree. Thanks, Otto. Are you still not growing? Hmm. All right, tree, I've got some new extra strength fertilizer. And here is some special inspirational music to pump you up. Uh, come on, tree, help me out here. Oh, you're getting worse. I don't know what else to do, tree. Just tell me what to do. Hey, Otto, what are you doing out here? Everything I can to keep this tree alive, but nothing's working. What are you doing for your tree? It looks great. Nothing. The little stream waters it. Water is all it needs. Water? That's it? But my tree has all this other great stuff. It shouldn't need water. That's like trying to replace breathing air with brownies. So you're saying there's no substitute for water? That's probably what I'm saying. Okay, I'll try it. Hooray! The water goes down to the roots, and then the tree can grow. Thanks for the advice, Monty. I feel better now. You're welcome, Otto. Now, will you walk me home, please? I'm actually sleepwalking right now. Wait, you're asleep? Oh, yes. I give great advice when I'm sleepwalking. Seriously? <coughs> okay. Let's get you home, Monty. <coughs> today. Which part? When Pastor Donna said that Pastor Pete would now be preaching about Joseph forgiving his brothers. Oh, yeah. And then Pastor Pete said, you must be mistaken. Uh-huh. And Pastor Donna said, I'm Pastor Donna. You're mistaken. And everyone laughed. Pastor Pete looked so upset. And then they just stared at each other. Yeah. That was not something that usually happens at worship. Oh, you guys, you guys, it's a fight. They're fighting. Slow down, Victor. Who's fighting? Pastor Donna and Pastor Pete. Are grown-ups allowed to fight? Apparently so. They're having an all-out, no-holds-barred altercation right now. Follow me to the vent above Pastor Donna's office. You've got to hear this. We've been here for five minutes, Victor. This doesn't sound like a fight. Are you kidding? Did you hear the way that Pastor Donna said thank you? She did not mean thank you at all. This is intense. But why are they so angry with each other? Ugh, isn't it obvious, Ottoman? Both of them thought the other was going to preach about Joseph today. Pastor Donna was going to do it, but then she asked Pastor Pete to do it. But she asked him over an email, and Pastor Pete doesn't check his emails unless you tell him you sent him an email. Which kind of defeats the point of an email. Well, she should have known Pastor Pete wouldn't have gotten the email. It's not his fault. Well, the real question is, who are we going to side with? What do you mean? Otto, our pastors are fighting. We have only days before our church splits in two, and we're forced to pick sides. The building will have to be divided between the two factions. So, Pastor Donna, as the senior pastor, will claim the sanctuary. Well, then Pastor Pete will take the Sunday school classrooms. Ha! 
Enjoy them while you can, because Pastor Donna gets the thermostat, and whoever controls the temperature controls the church. Pastor Pete takes the bell tower. The bell tower is useless because Pastor Donna will have already taken the bell. <gasps> you give that back, Victor. Never. Get out of our church, you rebels. You first. Wait, wait, wait. They're talking again. Pastor Pete said he's sorry he didn't check his messages. Yes, Pastor Donna wins. And now Pastor Donna says she's sorry for putting him on the spot. <gasps> See, I told you. Wait, they both apologized? Yep, the fight is over. I it's just over? After everything your side did? I think they're going to keep working together, even though they had an argument. So, no revenge or anything? They're just going to reconcile and move on as a team? Well, that's very grown up of them. Today, it's a day of days. I finally get to go to Nazareth now, the local theme park where Bible stories come to life. <gasps> there it is. There's the drop tower of Babel. And John the Baptizer River Ride. I'm saving the best for first. I'm riding on the Transfigurer. The Transfigurer? But isn't that a ride for older kids? That is precisely why I want to ride it. The ride clearly reveals the secrets of Jesus' Transfiguration. Are you sure you can handle it? It looks pretty intense. I've made up my mind, Ottoman. I will not rest until I understand the Transfiguration. To the Transfigurer! Adeline, you'll ride the Transfigurer with me, won't you? I'm on my way to the Red Sea Wave Pool. I have to hurry if I'm going to catch the 11 o'clock party! Jax, buddy! Just the man I wanted to see. You want to ride on the Transfigurer with me, don't you? How do I know you're not going to trick me? Ha! <laughs> trick you? On a field trip? This isn't fun and games, Jax. This is about unraveling the mysteries of the Transfiguration. It looks scary. It very well may be. But we must see for ourselves. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, maybe. The feeling is mutual, Jackson. <laughs> Welcome to the Transfigurer. The Transfigurer is not recommended for those of heart conditions. Have a blessed journey. Happened. It's it's all a blur, but I'm changed forever. Remember the transfiguration by purchasing a photo collage of your trip out Mount Tabor, 1995. There we are. That was when Jesus' face started glowing. I remember now. It was so mystical and otherworldly. Oh, that was when Jesus was praying and Moses and Elijah appeared, as if from nowhere. Placing Jesus in the company of Israel's holy people. And that was when the voice spoke to us. This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. And here's the big drop at the end that all roller coasters have. That part was scary, but straightforward. Huh. I think we just had a glimpse of what it must have been like for the disciples to see the transfiguration. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't understand any of it. Uh, I don't think the disciples did either. At least, not right away. True. Are you two going to buy anything, or just stand there? We are going to ride the Transfigurer again. Come along, Jackson, old pal. Our destiny awaits! <laughs> oh, boy! Giving something up for Lent might be hard. <laughs> I mean, sacrificing something until Easter is a long time. Forty days. 
What'd you give up for Let Jax? I gave up candy and cookies and crayons. You gave up using crayons for Lent? No, eating them. I know they're bad for me, but they're just so pretty. I gave up buying new safety gear for Lent. Besides, my parents say I already have more than enough. But you want to buy more? Oh, yes. Very much. But you made a promise to God, and you're sticking to it. Like me. I gave up cartoons, and it's been great. I'm reading, I'm going outside more. That's really good, Otto. Yeah. It is good. It... It is. It was good until I completely failed. You want to talk about it? It all started yesterday afternoon. I was on my way to read a book when I heard it. Stay tuned for the season finale of The Possum Patrol. What? Possum Patrol is my favorite cartoon. And tonight, we finally learn the mysterious origins of Sailor Sally, Explorer Supreme. At last, all will be revealed. We've been waiting four seasons to discover that. Um, Otto, do you want me to turn this off? What? No. I mean, it's just a commercial for a cartoon that'll be playing. Later tonight at 8 p.m. Do not miss cartoon history in the making. <laughs> Beneath the murky waters of the Amazon. That evening, I turned on the TV, but only to watch the nightly news. So, uh, we have a high of, uh, 62 tomorrow with, uh, Ugh. low 35. Well, maybe just a quick Two look at the opening credits. When there's trouble and you need heroes on the double, who do you call? Possum Patrol! If you need help in a hurry, better call someone hurry. Who could that be? Possum Patrol! It's beautiful! And you watched the whole episode? I did. God must be so mad at me. Otto, that's not true. Yeah, God loves us all. But I let God down. I couldn't say no to the one thing I said I wouldn't do. Pastor Donna says Lent isn't about saying no to things like cartoons. It's about saying yes to growing closer to God. But I made a promise to God and I broke it. God knows we'll break our promises sometimes. I might eat a crayon tomorrow, but I'm still part of God's family. The important thing is to not give up. Yeah, I I guess you're right. There's still a lot of Lent to go. I'll just try again. Yeah. Didn't we have more crayons a minute ago? I, uh, uh perhaps. <laughs> Did you hear? Miss Jane isn't going to be in class today. We have a substitute teacher! Why are you so excited, Victor? Don't you see? A substitute knows nothing of our rules. We're basically in charge of them. Victor, you can't treat a substitute teacher like... Gabe? Hi, everybody. I'm Gabe, and I'll be filling in for Miss Jane today. Oh, wow. This is better than I could have imagined. Now, class, I know that I've never taught Sunday school before, but I think that... Victor, what are you doing? Getting out my art supplies, Gabriel. Miss Jane always lets me express myself artistically during the Sunday school lesson. She's very supportive. Please continue. I can hear you. I'm... I'm pretty sure she doesn't let you do that. Anyway, who can tell me about God's covenant with Abraham? Monty? Are nose flutes real? Uh, I don't know, Monty. But as far as God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah, it was a promise that they'd have as many people in their family as there are stars in the sky. Any questions? Yes, right here. Hi, Mr. Gabe. It's me, Ada. You know my brother, Leo. Yes, Ada. I know Leo and you. I've been to your house multiple times. Do you have a question? Yes. How did Abraham and Sarah have so many kids? That would have to be millions and millions. Actually, their family would be their child, their grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and all the kids that come after that. It's a huge family, and we're all a part of it. Um, no offense, Gabe, but that's super wrong. We're not all related. My balloon is deflated. 
Yeah, I'm not related to Monty and definitely not related to Victor. It's true. What kind of trickery are you trying to pull here, Gabe? And um, can I join in on it? It's not a trick. It's true. You don't have to be related to be a family. Victor, please don't do that. Gabe, toilet papering the classroom is one of Miss Jane's cherished traditions. Now please, tell me how it's possible to be a family but not be related. <sighs> Look, family is bigger than just being related. Take me, for example. My parents adopted me. So you're not related to your parents, but they are your parents? Right. We can choose to bring people into our family. That's kind of how God's covenant works for all of us. So we're all adopted into Alejandro's family? We're all adopted into Abraham's family. And that's a great thing because that's God's family. Wow, really? God chose all of us just like your parents chose you? You got it, Ada. All right, Victor, I know Miss Jane doesn't allow that during class. What? It's for, uh, uh, circus practice. Hey, Ada, over here. We saved you a seat. Thanks, Otto. Hi, everyone. Hello, Adelita. Hi, Mom. I mean, hi, Ada. Oh, no. What's wrong? I forgot my lunch. I forgot my lunch! Well, this is a tale that needs to be told about a young girl just eight years old, the brightest little lady of the bunch. But this one's more a tale of woe, the type to make your heart turn cold. Today's the day that Ada forgot her lunch. She assembled it with most loving care, with a turkey sandwich and a big old pear. She threw in a bag of pretzels for the crunch. To drink a thermos of apple juice for dessert, a jar of chocolate mousse. Today's not the day you want to forget your lunch. Ada. Ada, hello. <sighs> what? You kind of went blank there for a second. Of course I went blank. I need to eat. Lunch is the most important meal of the day. If my body isn't properly nourished, I will get very... Wait, I thought breakfast was the most important. Wrong again. Everyone knows all of the important decisions are made over dinner. Brunch is the best. It's lunch! Lunch is the most important, and I forgot to bring my lunch! Now her blood sugar is getting low. She's feeling it from head to toe. Hunger pain, sure know how to pack a punch. The little gal is getting dizzy. Her post-lunch plan's thrown in a tizzy the day that Ada forgot to bring her lunch. Hey, we forgot to bring our lunch. Are you serious? Sure am. How's a person forget something like that? Don't know. Just happened. Well, boys, let's bring this home and go rustle up some grub. Ada doesn't have much time remaining. The food in her stomach ain't sustaining. And now it's getting harder to come up with rhymes. Because you've got a headache that's really big. And you need another word that rhymes with lunch. Must continue providing an internal monologue for little girl. But so hungry. Oh. Ada. Uh huh? You went blank again. I keep hearing such strange melodies. Adeline, while you were mumbling to yourself, your closest friends provided you with a nutritionally balanced lunch. Everybody pitched in. The pencil is from me. Oh, thanks, everyone. I'm really lucky to have friends like you. You sure are, Ada. You sure are. $1.95, two dollars. Huh. Can you believe Mom and Dad gave me two whole dollars for my allowance? I can imagine, Otto, because they gave me the exact same allowance. I just don't know why you wanted your entire allowance in nickels. Oh, I have my reasons. Wh why are you stopping? We have to get to the bank before it closes. Uh, you go on ahead. I have an even more responsible idea. More responsible than investing your allowance into a series of low-risk, high-yield stocks and bonds? Oh, yeah. 
You're not going to throw it all in that wishing well, are you? No. I'm going to invest it all in this wishing well. <sighs> oh, wishing well. I wish for five... No, wait! Ten dollars. All right. <clears throat> oh, wishing well. I wish for ten dollars. All right, wishing well. I'm going to need that ten dollars now since I threw in my entire allowance. Oh, no. I threw in my entire allowance. Mom and Dad are not going to be happy. I got to get it back. <laughs> well, there's your problem right there. There's no water in this well. But look at all that money. Just waiting to be rescued from this wishing hole. Otto, you're a genius. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is awesome. Uh-oh. Help! Help! Sources report that after the child, identified as Otto, was discovered by park rangers, emergency personnel began the three-hour process of digging up the well to rescue him. Hey, I'm on the news! The park wishing well is said to be in critical, but stable condition. Uh, what's wrong? Are you mad at me? Yes, Otto. And you know who else I'm mad at? Mom and Dad. Wait, what? Yeah, because after you threw away your allowance and did something really dangerous, they didn't even get mad. They just kept saying, we're glad you're all right. Well, aren't you glad I'm all right? Of course I am, but that's not the point. It isn't fair. I invested the money they gave me. You made a bunch of horrible decisions, and what did they do? They threw you a party. And they gave me this Super Beetle Man action figure. Because I was so brave. While Martha served, Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me get something straight. She just poured an expensive bottle of perfume all over Jesus' feet? How expensive are we talking here? One week's wages? Two weeks' wages? Actually, Victor, it was closer to a year's worth of wages. <coughs> I'm sorry. Did she just say a year's worth of wages? Wow, that's a lot of money. That's as much as my mom makes in a year. That's too extravagant of an offering. Mary went way overboard. She should have sold the perfume and given the money to the poor. It's funny you should say that, Victor, because the very next section I'm going to- I think of all the stuff you could buy with a year's worth of wages. Well, that wasn't really the point, Victor. The anointing of Jesus' feet was an act of worship and was similar to the anointing of kings. But I'm saying, sell the bottle and buy a cheaper perfume. It's still a nice one. It's still really nice perfume, but, you know, cheaper. And then she could pour that on Jesus' feet. Oh, and buy a towel so Mary doesn't have to use her hair. Then you could buy food and clothing for people in need. And keep a little for yourself. I mean, you're doing all the work here, right? Well, I think the next verse will help clarify one or two things. And did she really need a whole pint of it? How big exactly were Jesus' feet? All you need is like a tablespoon. One for each foot. Call it a day. We're getting off track. Choo choo! Okay. Um, choo choo! Here is the next verse. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Ah, oh, Judas to the rescue! Jesus replied, Leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Yeah, okay, but it still seems like a waste. Victor, you and your great aunt Marjorie are in the altar guild, right? What does that have to do with anything? Is it a waste when you buy candles or altar flowers or banners for the church? 
Couldn't you feed hungry people with that money instead? No way! It's the Alter Guild's duty to provide those things. We can't have worship without them. But where do you draw the line, Victor? I... 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 I guess I don't know. Jesus wanted us to help those in need, but what Mary was doing was worshiping, not wasting. She was showing love and honor to Jesus. We all worship God in our own way, and worship is never a waste. Do you understand? I do. Except for the hair thing. Why would anyone dry off their feet with their hair? I mean, a towel is much more absorbent than hair. I have to imagine you can only absorb so much water. that starts with M for something that's red under your nose. Shh! Mustache. Ah, thank you. Ah, uh, the name of the first chair of the UN Commission on Human Rights starts with an E. E! <gasps> no, no, that's too short. Shh, Victor, we're trying to listen. Eleanor Roosevelt. Ah, thank you. I've, I've got to, I've got to go! But the sermon isn't over yet. Clara, what's wrong? Talk about rude. Clara, are you in here? Maybe. This isn't your usual hiding spot in the coat rack. <gasps> I'm proud of you for branching out. <clears throat> Thank you, Ada, but I'm too upset to be happy about this wonderful new hiding spot. What's the matter? What Pastor Donna said about the Last Supper. Oh, it's horrible. You mean that Jesus was going to die? Not that. It's horrible that we're eating Jesus. What? She said that when you receive communion, you're eating the body and blood of Jesus. Why would we do that to Jesus? He's so nice! Clara, I don't think that... And after all Jesus did by suffering on the cross and dying for us, here we are, gobbling him up. It's just so rude! Uh, now, well, I never really... Uh, hey, Ada, what's a 12-letter word for... A... Onomatopoeia. Thank you. A uh, new hiding spot, Clara? Nice. Thanks. But that really doesn't make me feel better about people eating Jesus. Oh, you're upset about communion? Listen, Clara, you just have to remember that Jesus wanted us to do it. He said, take, eat, because he had a very good reason. He did? Of course. It's so we can absorb his amazing miracle powers. Victor, that's not the reason for communion. Uh, why else would we do it? Because he asked us to do it so we'd remember him. How could we forget Jesus? He didn't think we'd forget him. It's more like he wanted us to take some time to think about him. He did do a lot of great stuff. Some of it without miracle powers. And he suffered and died on the cross for us. All of us. You know, Clara, it's funny you're hiding in the church sacristy, since this is where we keep the stuff for communion. <gasps> you mean... Yeah, right in there where you're hiding. <laughs> Clara, we just talked about not needing to be scared of communion. Uh, I'm not. I'm just not ready to share a hiding spot with the body and blood of Jesus. If you need me, I'll be in the coat rack. 